So let's take this a little bit further. I'm going to come to my file drop down menu and I'm going to create a new document. Again, I'm going to work with 8.5 by 11 orientation set to horizontal. Say create. And I'm going to begin this shape transformation exercise with a rectangle. And on the left edge, I'm just going to create a perfect square by holding down the shift button like so. Again, I'm going to make that a black square by coming over to my color panel, making sure I bring the fill indicator forward and setting that to black. Bring my stroke indicator forward and set that to none. I'm going to come over here to my black arrow tool and I'm going to duplicate this shape by holding down the option button and clicking and dragging out another instance of that shape. If I hold down my shift button as I do this movement, I will make sure that it moves only horizontally like so. Let's scale this shape down. I'm going to scale it down by using the bounding box anchor points. And I'm going to hold down the shift button and the option button, or alt on PC, to resize that concentrically, meaning around its center point. And I'm just going to visually guess about half the size, like so. I'm going to create a visual blend between these two shapes. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to select both of them by doing a marquee selection, dragging over top of the two of these shapes so that they're both selected. In our toolbox, there is a tool called the Blend Tool. I'm going to double-click that tool to bring up that tool's options. The Blend options allow us to choose what type of spacing we are going to have. By default, it'll do something called Smooth Color, but what I'd like us to do is change that to Specified Steps. Now, this value that we set this to will really depend upon how far apart you spaced your shapes. But we can always change this later. I'm going to leave this as at 8 for the time being, and I'm going to say OK. Now, you can see that this Blend Tools cursor looks like an anchor point, which gives us a clue as to how this works. I'm going to click on the center anchor point of this shape once. I'm going to then click on the center anchor point of this shape once. And you can see it's blended those two shapes together and given me eight steps. Now I can tell right now that eight is too many steps. I'd like there to be fewer squares in between these two. I can change that though by coming back over here to my blend tool. With this blend still selected, I'm going to double click and change eight down to five. Click on the preview button so I can see what that looks like. There I go. That looks more like what I want. I'm going to say OK. Now this is called a blend, and this is a live blend, meaning if I was to come over here to my white arrow, for example, and click off so nothing is selected, and then come back to this shape with my white arrow, you can see, as I mentioned before, the white arrow allows us to select parts of larger groups. In this case, the first square of my blend steps. With that square selected, I can come over here to my black arrow, and now with the bounding box displaying, I can rotate it. You can see that the blend steps rotate as well. Now, while that's interesting, that's not the effect I'm looking for. So I'm going to go Command Z. I am looking for something that has a little bit of a curve to it, but I'm going to do this in a slightly different way. I'm going to come back over here to my toolbox. And again, I'm going to choose my black arrow. And I'm going to click again to display my blend like this. You'll notice that there is a line segment that joins this shape to this shape. And whenever we see a line segment like that, we know that we can curve it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to again come over to my toolbox. This time I'm going to click and hold on my pen tool. The pen tool allows us to create precise curves. But there's another tool in this pen tool set that I'd like to play with. And that is this one here called the anchor point tool. It looks like an upside down V. I'm going to float all these tools out into their own panel by clicking on this tear off button. Let me position that roughly there. Again, I'm going to use this anchor point tool. And watch what happens when I click and drag on this anchor point right here. I'm going to click down and to the left like that. You can see that these shapes now follow this line here, which is called the blend spline. If I use this anchor point tool again, you can see that I can reposition that handle so I can reposition the squares in that blend. I'm going to do the same thing on this anchor point over here. I'm going to click and drag up like this. And now I have two handles that are controlling this line segment. I can reposition the squares in between those blends just by playing with those handles. I'm going to come back here to my toolbox and I'm going to make one more change to my blend. I'm going to come back here to the blend tool and double click. I can see now that I've curved the blend spline, I have this option available to me. I can align the objects to the path like so. I'm going to say OK. So I've managed to make quite a bit of a change 
to what was originally a single square. You can see now that I've got this selected, I have this bounding box around it. I'm going to resize this bounding box by taking my cursor and while hovering over the top right bounding box anchor point, I'm going to hold down the shift button and just resize this down to about half its size like that. We're not done with this shape yet. With this blend, I'm going to come up here to my effects drop down menu and I'm going to hover over top of distort and transform. From this flyout menu, I'm going to choose the transform option. This transform panel has some very interesting tools. For example, I could take the scale of this object and scale it horizontally or vertically. I could also move it side to side or up and down or even rotate it. Well, you may ask, why do that in this panel when we already have tools in our toolbox that allow us to do all those things? Well, this is where the transform panel really becomes handy. You'll notice that there is a copies field down here. And what this allows me to do is create copies of this shape. For example, I'm going to create a copy. Now, I don't see that copy because it exists underneath the original shape. But let me rotate this. Now you can see just how that other shape is showing up. I'm going to bring that back down to 0% and I'm going to come back to this copies field. Let me describe what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to create a radiating pattern. I want more than one copy, but I'm not exactly sure how many I want. I want enough to be able to rotate this shape through 360 degrees of rotation. I'll say 10 times. That means I need nine copies of this original shape. So I'm just going to say nine in this value here. And I mentioned that I wanted those nine copies to rotate around through 360 degrees of rotation. Let's come over to my rotate value. And I'm going to type in 360 divided by 10. The original shape counts as the first one, and the nine copies add up to 10. The final thing I need to change is the rotation point. You'll see this anchor point proxy graphic shows us that it's currently rotating around its center point. The center point of this object is roughly here. I'm going to choose the bottom right corner anchor point to rotate around. I'm going to click Preview, and there we go. I'm going to move this panel out of the way so I can see this a little bit better. Now this is an interesting effect, but we can still play with it a little bit. For example, I think I would like to have all the centered squares overlapping each other. I can come over here to my transform panel and choose my move values and position them so that these shapes all overlap in the center. I could also change the scale, which creates an interesting effect in its own right. I'm going to let you play with this. Click on some of these other options here. Some of them are quite interesting. What happens if we click on one of these other bounding box anchor points to create something completely different? If you find something that you like, just say OK. I don't mind this. I think this is kind of interesting. What I'd like to do for this final step is to crop this composition inside another shape. I'm going to come over to my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw out a perfect square over top of my shape by holding down the shift button. And I'm just going to drag it out to roughly there. If I come over to my black arrow, I can reposition this over top of my shapes. What I'm hoping to do is crop this blended shape inside of that rectangle. In order to do that, I'm going to reselect the original blend shape. Now what this is, is an object with an effect on it. If I was to come to the View drop-down menu, for example, and choose Outline, you would see that, in fact, this whole object consists of the original two squares plus a blend effect. This is one of the reasons why Illustrator is so flexible. Let's come back to the View drop-down menu and select Preview again. This next step is necessary for us to do what we want to do in terms of cropping our blend shape inside of that rectangle. I'm going to, again, select that first shape. I'm going to come to the Object drop-down menu, and I'm going to select Expand Appearance. Now, if I come back to the View drop-down menu and select Outline, you can see that I no longer just have the two squares with an effect on them. It's actually outlined all of those shapes as one expanded object. I'm going to come back to my View drop-down menu and select Preview. Again, there is the rectangle that I would like to crop all of this into. In order for this to work, the rectangle needs to be in front of the object that I'm trying to crop. If there's any doubt as to its layer arrangement, you can always come to the Object drop-down menu, select Arrange, and Bring to Front. When that square is in front of your blended shape, hold down the Shift button to select all of them. The final step is I'm going to open up a new panel. I'm going to come to the Windows drop-down panel, and I'm going to select 
Pathfinder. Pathfinder opens up yet another panel. We will look at some of these options in more detail a little bit later. But one of these options, as you'll see here on the bottom row, third from the right, is our crop option. I'm just going to select that once. And now our shape has been cropped inside of that rectangle. As you can see, the shape transformation tools in Illustrator are really strong. We are just scratching the surface of what's possible. Let me show you this Illustrator file, the Spontaneous Compositions file. If you saw my earlier video where we did our spontaneous compositions by hand, you'll recognize this. This is a game that I like to play with my students, where we create in the first column a graphic element. In this case, I've created a square. And then in the next column, we choose one of the transformations in this case, I chose subtract. And finally, I've added another shape here. This exercise not only allows us to learn the tools of shape manipulation in Illustrator, but it also reveals some of the underlying principles that make up the craft of graphic design. I'll link to a blank version of this file in the description.